What's up with story points? Hi guys, this is James. Welcome to another edition of Agile Soundbites, where we explore bite-sized insights that will help on your Agile journey. You know, when it comes to Agile, there seems to be one practice that most people seem to misunderstand, and that practice is story points. So let's talk a little around story points. Let's use an example to help illustrate. Take a look at the wine bottle. If we stack the wine glasses on top of each other, how tall is the wine bottle in glasses? Now, I've asked that question a lot, and I know that in less than a second, most people say, oh, that's about twice as tall. Um, and if you answer twice, the answer is right. What if I asked a different question, though? What if I asked you, how many centimetres tall is the wine bottle? That's a harder question to answer. If we were to ask that question, typically we would find people much less likely to get the right answer, and we'd also find it would take longer to arrive at that answer, and we'd also find that there'd be a much larger variance in the answers that we got. So when it comes to estimation, we really want to move to a system that we tend to be much better at. And as from that um, simple example illustrates, we're not very good at absolute estimation. But relatively speaking, we're much better at making comparisons. So that's really what we want to do. And that's what a story point is all about. And that's kind of the misunderstanding that most people have. A story point is a relative measure of size and complexity. Okay. It's a relative measure of size and complexity. In other words, we can't go one story point equals one day. And if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I would have retired. I'm struck and rich. I'm a billionaire. I'm a trillionaire. I'm a zillionaire. Um, but it doesn't. And the reason why we can't say one point equals one day is because that's absolute estimation. And if we do that, in effect, we're not using story points at all. We're just changing the name days to story points. Okay, so we want to move towards that comparative system. So let's use an example to illustrate. If you've got a team that needs to estimate a story, the first thing is that if the whole team needs to work together to estimate the story. We don't want someone else who's not from an outside team, for example, handing us the estimate because at the end of the day, it's up to us to estimate our own work. And when the team all has a discussion about this piece of work, um, they might go, you know what, I think this piece of work's about twice as big as this one point piece of work. And if they said that, then they would give the new piece of work two story points. Because in comparison, this piece of work is about twice as big as that piece of work. They wouldn't go, I think it's going to take me two days to complete this work, therefore I give it two points. That's that subtlety the teams need to try on. It feels a little unnatural because we've been programmed for so long to give really hard and fast, that'll take me two days, that'll take me two weeks. to step back from that and experiment with comparative estimating. Now at this point in the conversation a lot of people say okay that kind of makes sense but here's my problem. My problem is that I still need to estimate how long something's going to take and if I can't map story points back to a unit of time when can I say something's going to be done? And it's a great question and the answer to the question is a team's velocity. So if a team measures its velocity over time for example and if that velocity tends to be 30 points on average, and this team is asked to um, uh, answer when will they have this 60 point feature delivered, then that's a really simple calculation because then say on average it's 30 points of sprint velocity, we've got a 60 point story, therefore this piece of work will be done in two sprints. So there is a way to map the more abstract comparisons of story points back to time, and you do that through team velocity. So I hope I haven't confused you. Um, I hope you found this Agile Insights helpful. Um, if you have, please click the like button below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.